In the depths of autumn, when the days grew somber and the nights stretched endlessly, the residents of the village spoke of things that made even the bravest amongst them shudder. There existed a house on the outskirts of town, where no one dared venture. The house, with its decaying dark walls and shattered windows, created an eerie and almost impenetrable atmosphere. The stories told of a man who lived there alone, the last descendant of a cursed lineage, entwined in a complex web of ancestral misdeed and retribution. It was said that this man, cloaked in shadows, wandered the woods at twilight and conversed with the ghosts of his ancestors. The villagers whispered that he possessed a book, a tome of forbidden knowledge, which could alter the fabric of reality and bring forth unspeakable horrors. Despite the unsettling atmosphere and the rumors that swirled around the house and its occupant, there was an undeniable sense of fascination that pervaded the community. Children would dare each other to draw nearer to the house or to peer inside the twisted iron gates, their hearts racing as they imagined the dark figure lurking inside. The adults, while feigning indifference, could not deny the gnawing curiosity that ate at them in their darkest moments. One day, a man named Richard, new to the village, overheard the whispered tales of the haunted house and its sinister inhabitant. Intrigued and skeptical, he decided to confront the man and dispel the rumors that gripped the village. Armed with only his courage and sense of righteousness, Richard approached the house one evening as the last rays of the sun sank beneath the horizon. The gnarled trees that lined the path seemed to reach out, their twisted limbs grabbing at Richard's clothes as he walked. The wind picked up, casting a chill over the world and bringing with it an unsettling silence, as if the very air itself was holding its breath. Richard, however, remained resolute, determined to unveil the truth. As he drew closer, the house loomed larger, its decaying walls and creaking timbers seeming to taunt him, daring him to step closer. The shattered windows stared at him like dark, empty eyes, as if the house itself were a living, malevolent creature. Richard steeled himself, taking a deep breath before carefully pushing open the groaning, weathered door. Stepping inside, he was met with a darkness so absolute it seemed to swallow him whole. He fumbled in his pocket for a match and struck it, the small flame casting a feeble light that seemed almost devoured by the shadows. It was in this flickering gloom that Richard caught his first glimpse of the room, a once grand hall, now choked with the detritus of years of neglect. Cobwebs hung from the ceiling like tattered shrouds, and the air was thick with dust and the musty smell of decay. Richard ventured further into the house, his heart pounding in his chest as he descended into its depths. The air grew colder with each step, and he noticed a strange, pervasive scent that seemed to fill his nostrils and cling to his skin a scent of age and rot that felt almost unnatural. And it was then, in the heart of the darkened house, that Richard discovered the truth the villagers had been too afraid to face. He found the man they spoke of, the last of the cursed lineage, his eyes vacant and his frame frail. With trembling hands the man clung to the book, the spine cracked, and the pages yellowed with age. It was a book of shadows, a book of darkness, and a book that held within it the power to unleash chaos. But as Richard stared into the man's hollow eyes, he realized that the true horror did not lie in the house or in the man, but within the pages of the cursed book. As the wind rattled the house and the shadows danced menacingly around them, Richard was left to ponder one question. Should he take the forbidden knowledge for himself, ensuring that the evil would live on? Or should he burn the book? destroying the legacy of darkness but risking the wrath of the unseen forces that lay dormant within its pages.